we think about differentiating the types of diarrhea, that's going to be really important to define large versus small. So kind of the classic things we think of would be volume, mucus, and not only is it present, but where is it present in the fecal ball, and then frequency, tenesmus, and dyskesia. And we'll see if my video will play. So this is a little Frenchie here that I believe had uh, granulomatous colitis. And you can see um, he's having a lot of tenesmus here. So this would not be a dog that has um, strictly small intestinal disease. I know just from watching him straining, straining, straining to produce that he has a large intestinal component. Certainly you could have mixed, but he cannot have solely small intestinal disease. So I know that colon is affected. And then also thinking about general body condition score. So BCS, MCS, also going to be really important. MCS is often one of the first kind of things to go, if you will, um, with some of these more chronic disorders. And so again, if we can score normal for our patients, we will be uh, more adept at detecting when things are going awry or starting to become abnormal, even prior to some of these other clinical signs um, starting to set in and prior to lab work changes. And then again, chronicity, weight loss, appetite, and then that term dyslexia, which is one of my favorite terms right now. This chart is really helpful. So this is from a review that um, Karen Allenspaw did that was published in, I believe, 2015. Um, and I like to use this. Uh, this can be used to actually also help guide younger staff, newer technicians, if you're having your technicians take histories, um, so they can kind of go through this checklist and ask the owner, all right, where is that pet scoring on all of these? So as I think many of us know, small intestinal disease is going to differ um, clinically significantly from large intestinal. So with small, we see um, usually a normal to increase volume, whereas with large, it's often going to be decreased. And then conversely, with large, we're going to see an increased frequency, smaller amounts, and usually a lot more mucus. Um, the only thing I'll say about this chart is that you can still have mucus with small bowel diarrhea. Um, it's just usually going to be more mixed in the fecal ball, not coating the outside, which makes sense when you think about the fact that the colon has so many goblet cells lining it um, and that's the last exit point before the pet defecates. And then another thing I wanted to say about weight loss here, um, I don't want people to walk away from this thinking that no colonic disorders cause weight loss. That's absolutely not true. The exception will be granulomatous colitis um, and sorry that should be GC not CG <laughs> um, but you can definitely have uh, a large bowel diarrhea causing weight loss if it's granulomatous colitis or something like pithiosis, but typically we only think of that with small bowel disease.